All right, we're good. We are live. All right, guys, this is number four in our series of six. We only got two more to go after this. Today we are talking, uh, Jason and Jimmy and I, we're going to talk about stress management and uh, how, basically, I think we'll, we'll kind of go over like some of the things that each of us do individually in our own lives, what, what things stress us, because there's different types of stresses. I think everyone has different things. Uh, and, but before we do that, I want to bring two points to light. Uh, first off, there are different kinds of stresses. There's physical stresses, there's emotional stresses, there's mental stresses, right? So things that affect us physiologically um, can have an impact on us emotionally. Things that have an emotional impact stress-wise can affect us physically. So there's a lot of overlap in these areas. If you're feeling physically stressed, there may be something you can do to relieve stress emotionally that will help you feel better physically and vice versa. So things like this go back and forth. There isn't one thing that's going to, that's going to, like, it's, it's a multi-layer process. And I think you'll see from all of our examples, how different things affect different things. The second thing I want you to understand, and this is something that I don't know, uh, Jason or Jim, if you've ever heard of the radish experiment. Radish. Um, I've had, I have go into detail. It's, it's something that I learned a couple of years ago that I look at every once in a while. It just blows my mind. And it's a it's an experiment that a guy did in the mid 1990s. And he basically one he his experiment was about willpower, but it kind of conversely demonstrated something about the stress, about stress and how we manage and our ability to manage stress. Basically, what he was doing, he took um a group of people, he set them in a room with a box of chocolate, cookies, and a box of radishes. And some of the people, he said, eat the chocolate if you want, eat the radishes if you want, whatever you want to do. And an other group of people, he said, you can only eat the radishes. You cannot eat the chocolate cookies. Okay. After he did that, he had that those people had to exert a level of willpower and 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 fight that challenge, deal with that stress of not eating the cookies, even though they wanted to eat the cookies, okay? After he did that, he also gave them another test that was one of those like set of dots on a paper. You have to complete the, the shape without crossing lines kind of thing. And this is crazy. The group of people that had to fight against eating the cookies only lasted half as long into their attempts and only completed half the number of attempts as the people who didn't have to use exert, exert willpower and deal with the stress of not eating the cookies, mm -hmm. right? So stress, and this is one of the things that this demonstrates is that stress is like a muscle. Stress is like burning energy. You have a limited amount of willpower and the ability to handle stress. So when we're talking about stress management, we have to understand that it is one, there's going to be times where you feel overwhelmed and that's okay. It's natural, right? And two, you can develop ways to deal with stress longer and have a better reaction to it. It's like a muscle. You can train a muscle. You can train your body. You can train your mind. You can build your lifestyle around things that can help you manage stress. So it's not, you never, you never need to feel like you're, you've got no way to deal with it. You can get better and it can get more manageable based on some of the things we'll talk about today. So uh, our ability to handle stress is not uh, limited. We can train it. We can get better at it. Um, Jason, what are some of the things that uh, stress you in your life? Uh, money, relationships, yeah. um, business, like managing the businesses that I own. Um, and I'd say also my own uh, like fitness, my own health too. Like, you know, like, like fitting, fitting all these pieces of my life together in a way that I feel like, um, you know, um, reasonably managing all of them, like good enough, you know, like not perfectly, but like it's work, it works generally well. Yeah. What about you? What about you, Jimmy? Um, I would say it's, it's similar. I mean, finances is, uh, you know, especially with, uh, oh, hold on, day and age of, of COVID, um, where, you know, either it be your employment was changed or dramatically shifted or pivoted because of uh, the environment we're in, um, puts a lot of stress on households and families and, 
um, just the responsibility of another life uh, as a parent <laughs> brings its own stresses, uh, especially in the, in the realm of not having control. When you don't have control, that in my opinion, in, in my, my personality is that I'm a control guy. I like to control certain things in my life. And when I don't have that, and for instance, uh, exercise sometimes when I don't have, say, the time or I've let priorities change when it comes down to um, work, uh, my, my, my daily schedule has shifted and I do not do my self-care, then my stress levels increase. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that happens. Um, and I try not to let it really happen often. Uh, I've, I've, I've only kind of fallen off the wagon only a handful of times in my, I don't know, 25 year <laughs> experience with fitness. And uh, I know that when I do, uh, it changes an actual neurotransmitter and hormones that I have that's, that, that makes me feel like I'm managing stress. So it's, it's, uh, it's a combination of everything. Yeah. You know, it's life, it's life and, and, and how we, and how we uh, are going to respond to it is what, you know, the stress level actually accumulates to. So, and how to right. manage it. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think we, most of us, especially uh, us in the fitness realm, we think about our fitness a little differently than probably most people do. For us, we're thinking about performance. We want to maintain a certain level of, of a standard that we're trying to help other people get to things like that. So I think we might look at things a little differently from what stresses us about our fitness and our health. Um, cause we're trying to, to maintain a higher standard, I think for other people, and this is, I've been on both sides. I don't know about you guys, but I've been on both sides. I've been on the side of being the, the fitness guy who's trying to help other people get to a certain point, but I've also been on the side of the guy who's not in shape, trying to figure out why does my life stink? Why am I tired all the time? What's going on? And that is an added stress in and of itself. Always feeling like you're playing catch up. You can never keep up. You never have the energy no matter what you do, you always feel tired. Like that in and of itself is a whole nother weight on your back to just breaks you down, right? Mm -hmm. So how does, how does somebody who's going through that kind of figure out what they need to do to reduce that stress or manage that stress? And actually, I just said something that made me think, is there, is there a way to, what's the difference between stress management and stress reduction? One of you guys want to grab that? So, I mean, uh... Uh, terms to me mean uh, so there's a whole lot in our lives that we can't control <laughs> uh in fact i'd argue most of it um, but what we can control to uh, some degree at least is our reaction to that stress um and so you know stress reduction would be you know almost um it's like taking emotion out of of uh you know the the scenario and let's Let's catalog the things in my life that are producing, you know, undesirable stress. And now let's create an action plan to, uh, you know, remove, you know, one of those things from my life. Uh, you know, and so it's like a systematized way of, of um, subtracting things that we perceive as stressful to us. But mm -hmm. stress management is more about, you know, training the inside, you know, the internal mind and the, and the, way we think, the way we talk to ourselves, our belief systems, um, you know, our, um, our routines that may either, um, given the same amount of stress, make us feel not overwhelmed, or uh, if we break those patterns and those thought, you know, those thoughts, those beliefs, then maybe the same amount of stress on a different day would make us feel, you know, completely overwhelmed, depressed, suicidal, right. I mean, you know, whatever, right? Right, right. The mental picture of, and I think this is a big piece too, when we look at the things that are giving, causing us stress, you talk about that, that mental image, the, uh, the, the, the way that we look at things makes a huge difference. If I'm looking at the need to exercise and thinking about, my gosh, I need to exercise. That's so stressful. I can't figure that into my schedule. And just the idea of adding some form of exercise into my schedule stresses me out then that's probably because the image I have, the reason that I want to do that isn't really something that's going to make me want to make that change. When you're fighting against a desire, your stress is higher. 
when you're when you're going with the desire, there's less stress about that action or that decision. So the idea of changing why you want to do something or what it is you want to do, where you want to go, and focusing on that is going to change what actions cause you stress. Does that make sense, Jimmy? You got an example or something that that you may have gone through that's kind of like that? Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah. When you when you set a goal for yourself and you have that goal as a as a as a journey and a trajectory towards it and your daily decisions go towards this goal, right? And w- it, when it comes down to, to the human psyche is that you need to see it daily, you need to write it down, you should have this image of what, what it's gonna be like once it's, it's done or you have it, whatever it may be. Um, and then I guess which, what we all do is uh, we, uh, we try to think about what the feeling's gonna be like when we get it. And then when we get it, it's usually it's lackluster. <laughs> and so we just kind of bypass all the journey of what that was to get to that point. And we just keep our head down and we just drive. And we, instead of just stopping and, and realizing like where we are in the journey of wherever this is, what we're doing is, is beautiful. And, mm-hmm. and we put stress on ourselves as men to provide and protect and always hustle and hustle and hustle. And then Jason was talking about this before, where we're in this hustle mentality of, of this culture where we want the, the next biggest toy, a bigger house, a fancier car, you know, a bigger 401k, but at for what cost? You know, so like the stress is- You got a 401k? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> but like having- like having these things where we, we, we don't sit and we just be, we're always doing, we're always in the, in the habit of doing and doing and doing and doing and doing instead of just sitting and just kind of being. And as a, as a culture, we do a lot of that and we bypass the beauty of what's happening in the present. We're so, we're so like caught up in what's happening in front of us or what happened behind us, like where we are today, we're perfect. You know, we're, 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 we are where we're supposed to be, right? And, and you think about it, where we were 2,000 years ago, we were, you know, running, running from our lives, you know, from things that were trying to eat us. We don't have that shit right now, but we, we still have more of a stress on our systems than when we did then. <laughs> and it's because of finances and it's because of spouses and and work and all this <laughs> Jason's laughing I'm like, <laughs> what are so, you talking about spouses call stress no they don't what's what's <laughs> with that families family stress what are you you're crazy especially around the holidays i mean geez right think christmas no <laughs> so i mean that that kind of stuff is like is is where you know the uh, our stress kind of like um like we said, it's how we react to things and the desire to, to be stress-free is not going to happen. It's yeah, going yeah. to get the concept out. You know, it's, it's how you react, the tools you have to, to respond in a way that's positive and not um, reactive. And uh, you, you build upon that. Yeah, I think, and I think you hit on the kind of, gosh, you want to call the linchpin of this whole thing, right? Yeah. The, the idea that you're ever going to get away from stress is it, it's not going to happen. There is always going to be some stress in your life. The question is, how are you prepared to handle it? Right. And that goes from a physical standpoint, emotional. Uh, we can talk about COVID, right? We can talk about the stuff that we're going through now. And, we, you know, Jason, you had the immune talk last week and you've got some stuff that we've talked about as far as how health is going to help fight this virus it actually helps fight all viruses, right? The ability of your immune system is really determined by what you're doing to reduce stress, keep yourself strong, you know, let your metabolism in your body be efficient. And the more things you can do to be healthy in your day-to-day life, the stronger you'll be able to fight diseases um, because you're going to be exposed to things no matter what. It's, we can never completely eliminate the exposure to negativity. How we handle it is what makes a difference. Uh, talk a little bit more, Jason, about that hustle mentality you, that, that uh, Jimmy alluded to. Um, you know, I, I, I spend most of my time in like the fitness, you know, world and, and it, I have 
I would say that because of the uh, technology increases, you know, the, um, the internet, you know, having been created in social media and those being platforms for promoting um, ideas and products, um, I've seen and experienced and got called up in myself at times, the, um, the, the message being that being productive is what I need to be at all times. Um, and I was also raised by a mother who, that's how she operates. Uh, I, used to, um, I used to hate it, but you know, I, uh, a big part of my adulthood has been facing the, the reality that try as I might, uh, you know, run away from, you know, do the opposite of what my mom, you know, promoted I find myself doing the same thing um, very often, you know, getting caught mm -hmm. up in just working, uh, you know, uh, working and training. And if I have downtime, I sometimes experience a guilt um, or um, anxiety because I'm thinking, oh, well, these other people, you know, are, are probably not taking a break, you know, and they're getting stuff done while I'm just chilling playing the piano or taking a nap um and so these are thoughts that go through my head and uh i i have to continually work within my mind to talk myself out of buying into that culture um you know at, at least constantly right i mean i think there is always a time you know and a place for that i mean mm -hmm. uh but if I buy into that belief system, you know, completely, and then, you know, then I don't, the logical conclusion from that would be, I would set up the entirety of my life to, to look like that, you know, to, to be always hustling for something rather sure. than, um, rather than just being um, for moments and um, letting, letting everything go by and, um, you know, enjoying the present. So, um, yeah. So like, that's a, I think, I think many, many people in many industries suffer from that. And, um, you know, I mean, there's so many layers to this conversation, you know, it's like right, we're, right. we're in a capitalist economy, uh, you know, a capitalist system. So even, uh, um, even the idea that, you know, more money is always better, um, you know, is sort of perpetuating that hustle culture, you know? Right. Yeah, that's, and that's a good point. The, the difference in fitness between trying to look a certain way and meet a standard aesthetically versus trying to be healthy can, can, can really cause a lot of stress. I mean, we've seen, I know in my experience, I'm sure you guys in your experience have worked with clients or work with people who just obsess over every little thing because they want to, to reach this goal, this gold standard of things that they see that are completely unrealistic because they're looking at the wrong picture. They've got the, the wrong visual, the, the wrong perception or whatever it is of what it means to be healthy because they're looking at the, the visual. They're not looking at the actual uh, inside the person. Where is that person's health actually at? Mm -hmm. You know, because if we look at most people on Instagram, they're not healthy. Their lifestyle is not healthy. Their body is not healthy. Their mentality is not healthy. Right. Their relationship with food is not healthy. Uh, all of that stuff is not actually healthy. If you look at somebody, I know plenty of people who, you know, don't have a six pack, maybe run at 25% body fat who are in better shape than I am in general, in their general health, their ability to do work, their ability to perform the, the quality of life and how they live their life. The, 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 stress reduction, the way they manage stress, all of these things, all these factors are part of that. So when your picture is wrong, it's going to add stress. Yep. When you're trying to reach things that are either unrealistic or not the true essence of health, and you're trying to do all these things, that's, that's one of the reasons why I highly recommend to people, especially when they're getting started, to stop looking up hacks and tips and tricks when it comes to health and fitness. Just focus on the basics. Move your body, move often, move well, and take rest. Those are the things that, that people need to, to think about when we're, we're, we're saying, hey, I need to do something to get healthy. Okay, I need to move my body. I need to move some weight. I need to learn how to move properly. And I need to rest when I need to rest. I don't need to worry about all these 
18 different hacks on YouTube about cut your belly fat and boost your metabolism and increase your testosterone here, do this funky thing, take this pill, do this six week course, whatever, just, just keep it simple. The simpler things are the less stressful they are, right? I mean, it's usually how things go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we talk about stress reduction and what I heard you say, Jason, is that for many people, we're creating our own stress. Yeah. Under the guise of, of, you know, it's like, we're, we're, we're defending our behavior um, by saying like, I got to get stuff done. I have like a lot of stuff to do. I get, things are important. I need more money. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, a, we create our own narratives to, you know, to support our own defense. Mm-hmm. But I think emotionally, you know, my instinct on this is I think emotionally, most people, you know, kind of do know that they're full of shit when it comes to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Jimmy, what is some of the things that you do in your daily routine or in a, maybe a, every once a week or like whatever it is that you kind of use to manage stress in your life? Uh, so what, I mean, many different aspects, um, from the, uh, from the start of when I wake up is try to limit the time I get to my phone. (laughs) That's, that's one. I try not to, uh, my phone is my alarm. So, you know, it goes off. I have to touch it to turn it off, get out of bed. And I, I try not to, you know, I, let me back up. So I take the Wi-Fi signal off my phone. So I have it next to my bed. I try not to have the Wi-Fi signal pinging a foot away from my face. You know, I have, I have, the, I have the phone sitting on the nightstand next to my bed so I can shut off the alarm. So I try to, I, I don't have the internet coming in, you know, and that's just another, another aspect of stress um, with EMFs, uh, electrical magnetic fields or, or, or frequencies. So uh, I don't actually turn on the internet um, for the first half hour or so of the day, you know, and I get up at 4 a.m. Um, most days of the week because I have a newborn. <laughs> if it's by choice, it's probably 5 a.m. <laughs> but uh, I try not to I bombard my brain with, um, <laughs> stress, you know, uh, immediately as I wake up, um, I try to journal frequently throughout the week. I just try to write things down on paper, whatever it may be, free writing. It could be something that I had that's unrelated to, to work. It might be a to-do list. I try to write some, some of these items down or just, just flow. Uh, meditation has definitely been something that I do. With meditation, if people don't really like that term, uh, just focused breathing. And uh, Wim Hof, Wim Hof is a very um, good resource to know how to actually do some breathing techniques to kind of center yourself, get into your, get out of your body, get out of your brain and just feel your breath. You know, I try to do that frequently just so I can check in Um, on a daily basis is sunlight. I, I, my body responds very, I'm very sensitive when it comes down to what the weather is. When there's sun, I am looking at it when I'm inside, like I'm, I'm looking at a, 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 a toy store at like a, and a five-year-old, <laughs> you know, yeah. I want to get outside and play, you know, and that's something that I've realized in my older years. It might be because I'm increasing more, um, you know, technology in my yeah. day-to-day life is that that's, that might be why I'm just craving um more sunlight and and i want to surround my life you know around that so you know when jason says like you know what's the reason why you're hustling to to earn more money to change your your situation or whatever it is you know like that why is like create a better and healthier life you know for me and my family you know having more space you know to have more get out in nature. We try to take hikes weekly, you know, with me and, and my wife, Allie and our, and our newborn and our dog, you know, like, you know, I was making a comment to, to my wife, Allie. I'm like, I don't know who's walking who, when we're out in, in, in a hike, I don't know if it's, I don't know if my dog is getting, you know, uh, 
all the benefit, you know, yeah. I think it's more me. I need to go for a walk. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really me getting out in nature mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, mother nature is that feminine side, you know, and we're always in the masculine side of trying to hustle, 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 and get stuff done. And, you know, uh, you know, we need to just get out in nature and just sit and breathe and, and be around trees. And that's what I try to do, you know, on the regular, this is, this yeah. is like every other day we try to take hikes, get out in nature. Um, again, those would be my, you know, my tip top. Okay. I think the, for me, just having a routine is a de-stressor. Yeah. You know, knowing that this is what I'm going to do, whether it be day to day or taking some time in the, in the evening before to plan out my day. So knowing here's what I'm doing today. So I don't have to think about anything extra. Right. I know when I get up, this is what I'm doing. When I finish that, I'm doing this. Not that I plan out every minute of every day, but I have a general idea every day what my goals are for the day so that I can structure things. And if something comes up, I can deal with it, but I still have my goal, what I want to get done for the day. And as long as that goal gets done, then I feel like I've accomplished something. So whether it gets done at two o'clock, whether it gets done at six o'clock, whatever, I'm, I'm trying to get something done uh, in that day. And for me, that's that really helps me deal with the number of things that I'm working on and the number of things that I've got going on, trying to take a look at a week, let's say, it's, it's almost like when I'm programming workouts for clients, right? I look at the week, I look at the month, I look at whatever it is I'm trying to get done and I try to break it down into small chunks so that we, I can progress day to day to get to where I wanna go. So outside of having a daily routine, get up in the morning. So for me, I get up in the morning and the first thing I do because a lot of my business and a lot of what I do is, on, is online, I'm actually the opposite from you, Jimmy. I get up and I'm on my phone. So I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm doing social media posts, I'm, I'm interacting with followers and clients and things like that and trying to get that stuff done in the morning. So then I don't have to worry about social media for the rest of the day. I can get it done, it's done, I'm, I'm off for the rest of the day. Um, from there, you know, I, I have, a, you know, I get up, I have either coffee or I have a chocolate protein powder that I like that, that it's hot and I can have some quiet time. And then I just start doing things I need to do for the day, whether it's writing an article, writing a blog, working on a newsletter, something like that. I spend the, the morning time kind of getting some admin and, and desk type stuff done. And then from there, it's activities, getting to the gym. For me, even when I'm not exactly sure what my goal is fitness-wise, because that's something that changes for me. I've, I've been through the, I want to be really high-level CrossFit. I've been through the, I want to work on body you know, body stuff and do more bodybuilding. I've worked on functional fitness stuff. I've worked on different things. Um, I have to get some kind of exercise. In. If I don't get some kind of exercise in, I feel overwhelmed with other things. It's for me, that's more of my meditation time. Jimmy, you said this on another video, like the gym is my church. And I think mm -hmm. uh, once you get into it and you understand how important that time is for yourself, you realize it doesn't matter what you're doing. As long as you get that time in, I could go in and just work on stretching for an hour. And I still feel like I did something. I still had that time. It, it's time of reflection. I have some of my best ideas when I'm working out by myself and doing something. I answer, I answer questions that I've had, or I solve problems, or I come up with solutions for things. Um, it's almost, it's almost as effective as sitting on the pot. You know what I mean? Um, for solving problems, but I don't do that as much anymore now that I'm healthy. So that's a whole nother discussion. Um, so yeah, I think having routine and setting up a plan and attacking it every day for me is a really big distressor. And some of the things that I deal with right now with COVID and with lockdowns is I'm an active guy. I like getting out and doing stuff. I like being around people. As much as I'm uh, comfortable being by myself, reading, researching, watching Netflix, doing whatever in my home, uh, there's still a big part of me that wants to get out and do things. You know, and the more we're forced to isolate, the more we're forced and the longer this process goes on, the more that's going to start affecting people. It already has, right? We look, we look at suicide numbers are up, domestic abuse numbers are up. There's all kinds of things that are that are increasing on the negative side because of all of this stuff due to isolation and people not having an outlet. So looking for a way to get an outlet. And right now, the best place to get that outlet is at the gym. 
right? You get community, you get people, you get physical activity, which is great for your hormones, particularly hormones that fight stress and depression and increase all the good stuff, right? And, and we know from looking at the numbers that the gym from a safety perspective with COVID particularly, it's the lowest, one of the lowest places you can go is from a, from a risk perspective of exposure to that. So for anybody who's looking for an outlet, number one, say whether you want to be a fitness person or not, I'm not a gym person. I don't like going to the gym, go to the stinking gym, do something, find something that you can do, get out, be active. It will help you feel better. I guarantee it. Right. So Jason, what are some of the things you do to reduce stress and manage stress? Um, I'm a combination of the two of you. Um, and there's a few things I do that I can add. Um, so I, when I wake up, I usually do some of the admin, you know, computer stuff too. Um, and then I definitely, oh, and I am definitely a creature of routine. Like routine, if I don't have routines um, and structure in a general sense, I become very agitated, very anxious. Um, so my general routine is wake up, um, do some computer admin type stuff, um, might be social media, but you know, something on the technology side. And then, uh, I definitely have to go exercise, um, usually like four, maybe five days a week. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's hard training every time, but I definitely do that mid morning because that's when, um, my gym is, uh, most empty and people leave me alone. I've learned the hard way it doesn't work otherwise. Like um, most of my career, I actually, um, I've owned facilities or worked in facilities and I actually pay a gym membership somewhere else to go train. Um, so I don't financially um, really have the means to do that right now. So, you know, I just go to the gym when no one else is really there. Um, mm -hmm. Like you, Bronson, I, that is also a form of meditation. Like I do come up with some of my best ideas while I'm just by myself moving. Um, and then uh, I definitely most days I try to uh, nap, but sometimes my mind won't let me. And so what it turns into is intentional meditation, which um, through lots of practice is pretty it's a, it's a pretty interesting experience uh, because even when I'm not falling asleep, um, but I'm alone, I'm, it's quiet, I'm, I'm in my own thoughts, you know, even if it's only for, say, 20 minutes, um, it's really interesting how I'll still feel like I had slept. Um, so that's been a cool experience. Um, what else do I do? I'm very much into animals. Um, so I have a dog. I love all animals. I saw your cat. Um, mm -hmm. He's, you know, yeah. Yeah. So I love, uh, you know, training dogs um, and, and just being around animals in general. I try to get outside uh, pretty often. I definitely get outside multiple, you know, every day I get outside somehow because I do have a dog at least. Right. Um, and in the winter months, I, I bring the sunshine indoors to, to augment the fact that I'm not in sunshine as much outdoors using my infrared light. Uh, I play the piano uh, almost every day in the evening time. Um, you know, might only be 10 minutes, might be, you know, an hour, um, depending mm -hmm. on what I got going on. But that, that is a very, um, a very uh, effective way to, uh, you know, create sort of peace. Um, so if I, <laughs> Like if I have a spike of anxiety um, and, and I'm really agitated, my immediate, my top three things I would immediately try and do is either nap, play the piano, or go for a walk in the sunshine. Um, so something from that list. Yeah. And then um, I definitely do like to watch movies and, and you know, TV. So every evening I do spend time watching something on television. Mm -hmm. um, I've, my entire life, I've loved doing that, and it's stayed that way. So yeah, okay. so that's my list. Cool. What do you have? Um, I'll, I'll go first for me. Uh, when we talk about things that can help reduce or manage stress, I think 
having a tribe, having a group of people that you can associate with. We talk about being isolated. The opposite of that, obviously, is having people you can hang with and, and share interests with, right? Uh, for me, I think the two biggest places, um, well, three places, my outlets as far as being social are, I think, first, the gym, being able to interact with people at the gym as a coach, probably more, I think. I, it helps me. Uh, there's, a, there's something to be said from my management of stress to be able to focus my energy on helping other people manage theirs. So that outlet of me being able to help other people get through things and improve and see their progress and having their successes kind of helps me feel better about me and what I'm doing to kind of give back and it just it kind of is that circular process. Uh, I also I'm a bowler so I bowl a couple times a week. I have a group of guys, uh, there's a league that I'm in, but then there's also a group of guys that we just get together because we're like hanging out with each other and we bowl. So getting out and having that, you know, the only thing we, any of us have in common is that we bowl, but it's an outlet. I don't have to think about anything else in my life. I can just go think about bowling, hang out with some guys, have some fun. And it's a good two or three hours that I can just be separate from everything else going on in my life. Nothing else is involved, right? Cut off. It's awesome. Uh, I, I'm a shooter. I like to go shooting when I can. Right now, that's not happening as much because ammo is so stinking expensive and everybody's out of it. Um, but that's uh, something else that I like to do, kind of get out and, 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 again, get away. I don't have to think about anything else. I'm just in the moment of what I'm doing right then, and it's kind of relaxing. I can focus on something, and it uh, just takes me away from anything else that, that I'm dealing with. So that's a good that's that's a, a good thing, right? Not only is it social interaction, but it's also something that I can focus on a hundred percent, be in that moment, and it just removes me from anything else that's going on that may be stressful. You have anything like that, Jimmy? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, um, I'm a pretty big golfer. Um, I've been oh. playing golf since I was a kid, and my dad taught me how to play. So every time I play, I, you know, me and Jason went out. I think maybe once or twice this uh, past summer, you know, before our daughter, uh, my daughter was born and uh, just like, again, sunshine, nature, you know, being around people that are like-minded, you know, your workout buddies, you know, just that camaraderie, just like, I kind of like adding all those together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also same, I, I used to go shooting quite a bit, you know, uh, but I'd like to, I, I would, I wanted to find a range that was outside. <laughs> instead of being stuck in a cooped up stuffy dark you know shooting alley you know yeah. shooting range. I want to be outside <laughs> so I, I went to Annapolis and I found a resource that that provided that for me um you know when it's in the winter time I used to snowboard ski you know ice skate uh again outside activities you know as much as mm -hmm. possible um and then and you know when it's when, when the weather is is crappy or bad you know do stuff inside like play racquetball you know i used to play that on the regular when i when the resource was there yeah. um you know just again being active uh i i used to uh, be very big into art when i was growing up so you know that was my resource to to be creative you know and as we get older we we less and less are are using that side of our brain you know we don't we don't use the right side and that was a great outlet. And I, I tapped into it, you know, like frequently depends. I go in through phases sometimes but when I do, you know, I just sit and, and just maybe those coloring books, you know, where you just sit and color, you know, you take like, I don't know, I don't know what they're called, but uh, just that's so therapeutic for me. Yeah, they're adult coloring books. That's, that's what, what it is. Yeah. And <laughs> you just take, you take some color pencils and I yeah. can spend two hours you know, just shading and creating my own like color scheme to, and I'll put on like some, you know, very calm music, light a candle, you know, and we'll just do that for an hour or two. And I, I mean, I, that makes me just so in the moment. I don't think right. about work. I don't think about past. I don't think about future. I just think about what, what is the colors, how are they speaking to me? Right. Um, so having these outlets, you know, and try to do those frequently really helps to manage everything um so it's having a having a, a balance of different things not just active yeah okay I, that's a good point i like the point about the creativity you're right there's many people lack 
the creativity, partially because they don't take the time to develop it. Yeah. And then partially because everything is done for us today. We don't have to be traded with anything because we just click a button and things are done. We don't have to think about how to solve problems. We don't have to think about not even and, and creativity. I don't mean just artistically, right? right? Because, because creativity can be in, in how you think about problems and how you solve things. Is Are you solving things creatively or are you just following a, a script? So I, I think the critical thinking and creativity kind of go hand in hand in a way. Being yeah, able to build, identify. Build yeah, and identify and come up with things and, hey, how do I handle this situation? Uh, everything's done for us. But I do like it on the artistic side because that is a whole different aspect that almost forces you to be in the moment. Like you can't be creative and not be present. Right, right. And, and, yeah, that's, you, and that's a yeah. huge, I think that's a huge thing. Yeah, it just is. You just kind of accept whatever's happening and you let things happen the way they right. are. Um, and there's no wrong, there's no right. It just mm -hmm. is. Um, and it's all subjective. That's what art is. <laughs> and that's why it's so beautiful. And like, you, you can create something that you find is, is amazing, but then you'll see what happens that happens in your psyche. If you say, Oh, it sucks. What's well, like, Oh, it's your ego. It's your ego saying that, Oh, <laughs> it, you're trying to judge it. You're trying to judge it before you're, you're doing your self judgment before anybody else. And we are our worst critic, your own person. Sure. Sure. <laughs> ourselves you know so it just kind of it, it helps to practice these things in, in in many different mediums um and that's why where sports can happen where you can create your own way of doing something that's why i love golf like there's not one way to get the ball in that hole <laughs> that's why i love it <laughs> you know it's happy gilmore said it the best <laughs> yeah it's the, it's the same with bowling that's one of the right. reasons i like bowling what a one of the biggest things I enjoy about bowling, honestly, is watching other people bowl because I had never seen a single person bowl the same way. Yeah. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And there's, and there's thousands, there's, I, I didn't realize this, but this is completely not anything related to what we're doing, but there are millions, like bowling is like the number one sport in the world. Like it's bigger than soccer, the number of people that bowl, like worldwide. I, it blew my mind when I learned this. It's crazy. So many people bowl, but there's so many people doing it and everyone's doing it a different way. It's crazy. Um, because every, everyone's creative. Yay. Jason, what about you? What are some things uh, socially that you do? So like find my tribes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's actually, um, well, one was creating the gym, honestly, like the way, you know, the whole, the way top tier is designed is how I, how I operate. And so, I figured, well, let me try creating something to attract people who like what I like to me. Um, mm -hmm. That's helped out. Um, I also um, also uh, uh, am enrolled in um, essentially school, so uh, the Czech Academy to the Czech Institute, and it's uh, that's something that's been very very nice for me too because um, I while my <laughs> it's hard to let me see. Yeah. I am, there is my career, but I am also a lot of my career. Like it, it is hard to separate Jason from his career. Um, so I enjoy learning and the complexity of the human body a lot. And the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. And finding, finding other people who have more experience and more wisdom uh, than me and then sort of inserting myself into that tribe has been very powerful for me. Um, the Czech Institute uh, and the Czech Academy definitely has served that uh, purpose for me. Um, I am definitely by nature more of a loner. Um, and so I, uh, I in order to um, recover from the socializing that I do every day, um, <laughs> Whoa. The, the yeah. more uh, the more I uh, socialize every day, uh, you know, in my career, the more I realize I have to um, take time to myself. So my my instinct is not the same as you guys. Like I don't seek out groups, um, you know, regularly to socialize with. I'm I um, I have a close you know, a uh, small network of close friends 
and I do rely on them from time to time when I'm feeling overwhelmed or um, you know, they invite me on something that I think sounds fun. But um, my actual default is to have a lot of quiet time when I'm not involved in my day-to-day -day life. Um, and that even, that, that, to be truthful, that also even extends into my relationship. Like, you know, anyone I've ever dated, including my wife, um, I, I've kind of, it's been difficult in relationships, you know, because the person that I'm partnered up with is usually more social than me and wants me to be more social like them, but it becomes a source of stress um, and, and raises my anxiety rather than um, what it does for them, which is usually lowers their stress and lowers their anxiety. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so yeah, so I'm more, all my life I've been much more of a loner than most of the people I feel like around me. Sure. Yeah. So you guys have both said something that makes me think we need to do maybe another session at another point in time, maybe not as part of this, this one because we haven't planned it, but maybe we add one or do another one another time. And that is um, just relationships, dealing with particularly with spousal or, you know, life partner relationships and how to deal with some of the issues as guys that we come across. Like what are some of the common themes that we deal with? Because I know there are common themes right? Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> so there are definitely some things that men tend to do in relationships that maybe we can talk about um, some things that, that might help some guys out. Um, cool. All right. Is there anything you guys want to add as far as uh, stress management, stress reduction, any tips that you, we haven't talked about or things to think about that we haven't already kind of covered? Um, I'd like to, to, that one, we actually touched on it last week and just like the uh just the day in and day out the the minute by minute practices that you can do by breathing through your diaphragm breathing through mm -hmm. your belly take the time to really take in some solid breath in through your nose and by doing that what that'll do is exercise and develop your diaphragmatic muscle so that you can start breathing in more through the abdominal wall than you do chest and, and neck. And that'll yeah. kind of calm a lot of your uh, just reactive stress. Yeah. Breathing properly, uh, breathing in through your nose, but then uh, the tongue placement, placing your tongue at the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. Okay, what yeah. that'll also do is just help you just simply relax and focus on just your breathing, just so that you can um, just kind of manage your state. And that's a tool. That's a tool that we all should be doing. We're mouth breathers, okay? We're designed to breathe through, through our nose. You see a kid breathe, they're breathing in through their diaphragm. You know, mm -hmm. and what happens is that the older we get, the less and less we do that. And then the more stresses that come into our life and everything starts to compound. Um, but bringing back to the basics, that's something that you can do day in, day out, all day, every day, breathe through your belly. Yeah. If you, if anyone's interested in learning more about that, just do a Google search on parasympathetic breathing and that'll give you good, 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 some good information on what that's all about. Uh, good, Bronson, Jason. You, you probably, I mean, I, I feel like you could speak on this, you know, more in depth than I can, but uh, I want to just make sure everyone, the audience realizes that it's, uh, I'm not going to say impossible, but extremely difficult to manage stress if we don't prioritize the health and fitness of the body first. You know, the mind, if every day you're exhausted uh, and, and depressed and anxious or whatever the, the, the feelings are um, and you're completely out of shape and unfit, it's infinitely harder to manage what you're going through um, if you don't create a foundation of physical health to then layer on top of it, the practices that we've shared in this video. Um, yeah, yeah. It's uh, the challenge of someone who's feeling like they're overstressed or that they're struggling to, to get through the day is understanding and being honest with yourself that whatever you're doing right now isn't working. You've got, that's the first step. The, the, mental, the, the mental awareness to stop for a second and say, look, what I'm doing every day, whether it's my routine, whether it's my 
uh, nutrition, what I'm eating every day, whether it's the relationships in my life, whatever it is, something that I'm doing needs to change if I want my life to change. And in most cases, that has to do with eliminating something that's negative and adding something that's positive. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be a huge, like major change our complete our lives overnight. It can be this group of people I've been hanging out with. I need to reduce the time I hang out with them so that I can reduce the negativity in my life. Or even if you keep hanging out with those people, I need to start hanging out, find a new group of people that are more positive and start hanging out with them first. That may lead you to want to stop hanging around with the negative people. It may be, I need to just get off my couch and go for a walk once a day. Do something that's gonna get you going in, or in the right direction and build on that. It doesn't have to be something huge overnight, but it's gotta be something, you've got to change something. And, and you're right, Jason, the, our body, I think I just posted about this a couple of days ago, you're not feeling stressed and worn down because your life is causing stress and, and you're feeling worn down, right? It's not your life, it's not your job, it's not your kids, it's not your family, it's not your money situation that's causing you to feel worn down. It's your inability to handle the stress, right? It's your routine, your mentality, your physical conditioning, your nutrition. Those things are all there so that your body can perform efficiently. efficiently. And by definition, a body that is performing efficiently can handle stress. So what you're saying is absolutely correct. If you're not in shape, if you're not eating foods that are going to keep you working, keeping your, keep your body working well, then you're going to feel worse than your conditions actually may be. And that's where I think a lot of people are. They're feeling, they're feeling over, completely overloaded. They feel like the world is ending all the time when really they just need to get themselves better so they can handle it better. Absolutely. So cool guys. I appreciate the time again, always. Um, you know, when we talk about finding people to hang out with and having a community, you guys are on that list for me. I like having, I like having guys that uh, I can relate to that kind of are passionate about things that I'm passionate about. Um, and I can talk to about things and, get, and they get it right. That's the, <laughs> that's the key, right? Talking to people and they don't go, what are you talking about? You're a weirdo. No, I can yeah. say some weird stuff and ideas that I have and you guys go, oh, yeah, that sounds weird. <laughs> right back at you man <laughs> so all right guys we'll see you guys next week um jason don't forget you got to send me last week's video so we can post it up and uh have a blast guys enjoy your week all right, guys perfect stay safe out there